Pop up Flamby's Advent Calendar. O I A A A A A H A H I H I H I H I H I H I H I H I H I H I H I H I H I H I H I H I H I H I H I H I don't forget to check out, as always, my personal Teespring shops, damage.com and damage.eu during the whole advent calendar. Great deals going on over there, links down there in the description. So recently I was teaching rational numbers and fractions to my students in sixth grade once again. And there I was um, pulling back to elementary number theory a tiny little bit when dealing with when is um, basically a fraction completely reduced. And then I told them that if they have two consecutive um, integers in the numerator and denominator, then the fraction is going to be cancelled out completely. It's going to be irreducible. What this means is that two consecutive integers are always co-prime. Now this is what we are going to prove today and this is actually one of my most favorite number theory proofs. I don't know why it's just nice and sneaky and, and just overall very easy to prove and, and, and it's a lot of fun. And I hope you are going to enjoy the video as much as I do enjoy proving this little statement. Two consecutive integers are always co-prime. Let's put this into more mathematical terms. When are two numbers co-prime or relatively prime? Well, if their greatest common divisor is equal to one, obviously. Meaning if we have two numbers, so 4n and n plus 1 with n element of the positive and negative integers, we have that the GCD of those two, n and n plus 1, is equal to 1. This is what our statement up here states and we want to prove it. And now here for the first approach. This is going to be a direct proof. So for the direct proof what we are going to say is we are going to let our GCD be equal to some random arbitrary number p out of the um, positive integers, for example. So um, for the direct proof, let GCD of n and n plus 1 be equal to, let's say, p, where p, obviously, the GCD is defined like this, is element of the natural numbers or positive and negative integers. Now, next thing we are going to do, no, p should be from the natural numbers, but never mind, this really doesn't change anything on the problem. What we are going to do is we are just going to take a look at what it means for two numbers to have a greatest common divisor, which is equal to p. Well, greatest common divisor means that p divides both n and n plus 1, meaning this statement right here is equivalent to saying that we have p divides n and p divides the number n plus 1. I'm going to go into a little bit more detail in the next um, proof basically about why those next statements are true. But if we have p dividing the first number and it divides another number, this also does imply obviously, I say obviously, but maybe it isn't to some people so keep watching, that p also divides the difference of the two, namely n plus 1 minus n. And if we take a look at n plus 1 minus n, well, n and n are going to cancel out, meaning overall this is equivalent to saying that p divides the number 1. What does it mean for p divide, to divide the number 1? Well, this obviously means that there's only one number which divides the number 1 in the integers, and this is 1 in and of itself because it's itself inverse, meaning p must be equal to 1. You can put equivalences here, this really doesn't matter. Now, well, this proves our statement that we have above, namely that the GCD must be equal to 1. And now, well, this right here, you can put your little proof square next to it. I'm going to go into a bit more detail on the steps that we did here in the proof by contradiction. For the proof by contradiction, what we are going to do is we are going to suppose that the GCD of those two numbers is equal to some number p which is not equal to 1. We are going to suppose the contrary of the statement that we have up here. So suppose that GCD of n comma n plus 1 is equal to p where p is not equal to 1. Now how can we proceed from this point onwards? Well basically in the same way and as mentioned before I'm going to go into a bit more detail here. If we have the GCD of n and n plus 1 being equal to p, that means that p divides both numbers n and n plus 1. Meaning p divides on the one hand n and p divides on the other hand n plus 1. What does it mean for one number dividing another number? Well, this is equivalent to saying that if we take the division of these two, n divided by p, this is going to be equal to some number r 
out of the positive and negative integers. This is what it means for a number to divide another number. Same with our p divides n plus 1. And we have that n plus 1 divided by p is going to result in some number s, which is also an element of the positive and negative integers. Now the cool thing about integers is that they are closed under addition and also the inverse um, operation subtraction. Meaning what we can do is we can take our two numbers r and s and subtract them from one another. So s minus r, since they are closed under addition, for example, 5 minus 7 is going to give you negative 2, which is once again in our positive and negative integers. So this right here is element of the positive and negative integers. This is also equal to saying we have n plus 1 divided by p minus n divided by p. And we know how subtracting or adding fractions works. We have the same common denominator here, meaning we can put everything into the numerator. Now we got n plus 1 minus n in the numerator. Well, n and negative n are going to cancel out, leaving us with 1 divided by p. Meaning overall that 1 divided by p must be element of the positive and negative integers. But as mentioned before, the only number which divides 1 such that we get a fraction being in our positive and negative integers once again is the number 1 in and of itself because it's a self inverse. Meaning this right here implies also equivalent to saying that p must be equal to 1. But this is a contradiction because at the start of our proof we supposed that p must not be equal to 1. Since this is a contradiction we can thus conclude that p must be equal to 1 in the process, proving our original statement yet again. Putting the proof square next to it and then we are done. By the way, if you are also finishing proofs from time to time, then I invite you to use the incredibly rigorous proof finishes for this job. You see this right here is the QED proof finisher. They are actually pretty cool. I haven't put them out in quite a while. You can find them over on stimmage.com. They are selling pretty well. They are pretty good and a lot of mathematicians, physicists, no they are not doing proof engineers. Engineers do a lot of proofs. <laughs> Just joking. Um, use them already when um, not being able to finish up their homework in time or overall so they just put the QED square onto it and then they just say it's done because it says QED so we are obviously done. But yeah I hope you did enjoy this little number theory exercise. I really like it and there are two ways and there are probably other ways to um, deal with um, this statement. So if you got any other proofs going then make sure to post them down there in the comments. I would love to see a few more if you can come up with a bunch of more. And other than that I hope you are going to tune in for the next day of Papa Flemish's advent calendar. I'm saying advent calendar for the for the bunch of people who likes me saying it like this. And other than that don't, don't forget to also check out Flemish Wood, my woodworking channel. I'm until next video. I'll see you guys on Flemish Day. Ciao. Have a great one.